Hi everyone, uh, welcome back to our show. So today we are very happy to have Rushi, uh, the co-founder and CEO of Movement Labs to our show. So I think Movement Lab is definitely one of the like super crazy hottest uh, topic right now, especially in Q4 this year. And uh, especially I think everyone is very crazy about uh, the task of the incentivized test net. So I think today we have Rushi uh, to uh, in our show to explain more about like what's Movement Labs and like uh, what's the vision of Movement. Welcome Rushi. Thanks, guy. Thanks for having me on, and um, thanks for the kind words. I'm looking forward to this. Awesome. Yeah, I think first of all, could you mind like uh, explaining about like what's what's movement? Yeah. So uh, let me start. I'm Rushi, one of the co-founders of Movement Labs. Uh, my background is engineering distributed systems, um, and we can get more into my background. But I was always interested in alternative programming languages. Um, started writing in Cosmosm, the Cosmos days, and early Solidity days um, around August 2022. Uh, I started building Movement, um, which is the first to move EVM layer to an Ethereum. So you can think about Aptos and Sui um, are the two main move L1s. We're bringing the move language and VM to Ethereum through our layer two. Um, so I think so far we've built one of the biggest um, alternative VM ecosystems um, and excited to keep growing up the chain. Awesome. So what particular problems do uh, the Movement Lab try to solve? Like, or what's the key differentiation between you guys and other Obvia? Yeah, so I think it's a few different things. So firstly, we're uh, mainly focused on Move Language and Move VM. Um, there's obviously Solana virtual machine and other wasm based virtual machines. Um, we're focused on two main things. First is speed. Um, so with uh, paralyzed high throughput execution environment, uh, transactions can paralyze um, we have optimistic parallelization via block SDM. Um, so you don't have to worry about state conflicts like you see in the Solana virtual machine. Um, I think secondly, and kind of what we're really focused on is security. Every year, there's four and a half billion dollars lost in smart contract hacks. So what we're working on is increasing user experience such that um, when you have developers that deploy smart contracts, they don't have to worry about being hacked. They can simply deploy contracts um, and not have to pay hundred thousand dollars auditing fees and um, you know deal with all the issues that the EVM has to do with. Um, so the TLDR is Move is the fastest and most secure virtual machine, um, and we're working on bringing it to Ethereum. There's a few additional enhancements like a decentralized sequencer, a fast finality mechanism to enable um, optional finality layer two, so you can essentially have transaction finality or implied finality in seconds compared to um, Ethereum. Awesome. So I so it's like to put it simple, it's more like a faster, more secure, and also EVM compatible yeah. With VM, right? Yeah, fastest and most secure layer two on Ethereum. Awesome, awesome. And then how about like the uh the relationship between like kind of movement with like other move we uh other move language uh yeah. on like Soy, Aptos. I think Soy and Aptos uh recently have been really really uh proactive, especially yeah. on the, uh the ecosystem building. On the token price, yeah, yeah. So Aptos is an investor in us, so we work closely with the Aptos Move team. Um, I think Sui also is a great research team, and uh, we look forward to working with them pretty closely. Uh, but I think generally, like Aptos and Sui have uh, built up the moving system, um, are two phenomenal layer ones. And we're, what we're working on is bringing this move language um, to Ethereum. So I would say it's pretty synergetic, um, and that we're all working to make move great. Um, but in the short term, uh, in, in the long term, we may see like, uh, like it's kind of like the EVM on like Ethereum versus Binance Smart Chain versus Arbitrum, right? Um, different EVMs exist, but ultimately they all work together to bring Solidity um, together. And we're doing that with the move language. Exactly. Yeah. I feel like honestly, I'm pretty bullish on the uh, move uh, ecosystems, uh, especially for example, I, I'm a bit of Sway ecosystem. Uh, I use a lot of Sway, like uh, DeFi projects, especially with the like stable coins, Celtus, Navi. But sometimes like uh, I come across a lot of issues, especially when I try to like uh, bridge the USDC, USDT to the Sway native ecosystem. For example, like Binance doesn't support like Sway USDC withdrawal from from Binance to like the native um Sway wallet. So I think like with the uh with movement, so basically the EVM compatible features, I think basically offer like seamless experience by having like the ability of both like the fastest, more secure, and also the EVM compatible. Exactly. Actually seeding in the uh, EVM yep. system, right? Yep. Cool. Yeah, I mean, and then happy to know more about like the recent updates, right? Yeah, because I think everyone's talking about the uh, the latest, like uh, hundreds of 
uh, task about the uh, incentivized test net, right? Yep. Yeah. Well, yeah any, so, any, any tips for it? Yeah. So how we thought about test set is that most test sets today are boring and that uh, it's like one bridge, one dex, and do that bridge and dex. Um, but kind of doesn't actually lead to any good user experience for users. So if you're a test set, download the maps XYZ, you check out our fully gamified front end. Uh, what's really interesting is that every week there's new games, uh, there's new apps, there's new features added to the test net. Um, and one thing that we're working on is making sure that the user experience is great. So when we launched, we had a lot of quests come to market, which is good and bad, right? We had over 40 apps on test net. But the issue is that each app had like five to 10 quests. So that means that as a user, you have like 200 quests, 200, 300 quests. But one thing we did and told the users was like, you shouldn't do all the quests. In fact, it's up to you if you want to do it. Um, we only need to do like 10 to 15% um, to be considered. We don't value, uh, we don't require you to do all the quests. We understand that there's a lot of apps, a lot of quests. And especially as we scale, there'll be tens of hundreds of apps, right? Um, so how do we combat that? So I think the way we look at it is we want... Um, Essentially, if you're using testnet, go testnet on boom apps, XYZ slash apps, check out all the tests, apps and quests, and just do your best. Um, and then we'll make sure to reward uh, folks that like, complete at least 10% of one guild. Got it. So like kind of 10 to 15% is kind of like uh, yep. the, uh, the basic requirements, right, I would say. Yes, yes. Got it. So like, would you, I mean, like, uh, instead, I mean, like, do you prefer like having like, do you prefer like quality or quantity like uh for, for the users? Like for example, yeah. if our like a new new audience or new users of the uh testnet users, testnet uh basically shall I just do more tasks with one account or shall I create multiple accounts but like each of them try to do like uh maybe 10, 15 percent task? Which one do you, do you think is better? Yeah, I mean we'll probably have to see both, right? People will probably do both. Um I think the way we look at it is uh, we obviously want to incentivize organic volume and organic traction, um, which is why we're giving a big um, incentive to, to developers, where if you're a developer, you participate in Olympus, which is the hackathon, you can earn a good amount of the future awards. Um, so I think that's what we, we, we prioritize developers there. For the users, I would say, like, obviously, like, it would be cool to like have as many wallets, but that doesn't... Get, I can't guarantee anything. Um, the team has not guaranteed anything. Um, so use the test at your discretion is what I can say. Got it. Makes sense. Is it is isn't it too late to join it, right? So like the snapshot nope. hasn't done yet, right? Uh there's nothing been there's no snapshot been taken, yes. Yeah, yeah. Awesome, awesome. So we still have time to like uh hurry up. Awesome, awesome. Yep. Cool. So like, yeah, I mean, like, uh, I think everyone's like very like excited about the uh the uh the token launch, the midnight launch. So like, after the initial airdrop, right? So what do you think about what's your thoughts about like how to sustain the communities after the airdrop? Yeah. Yeah. So I think like the a team that did this really well is like Athena. I think they did a really good job. Is having multiple seasons, like even layer zero, have like season two airdrops where it's like once we launch mainnet. Now it's like using the main net apps to qualify for season two, right? Um, so we're gonna have multiple seasons. Um, make sure we're sustaining volume past the main net. Um, so if, you, for example, you can test right now, you'll earn more rewards for using main net um, for building apps on main net. So we we plan to use the token supply um, incentives to keep developers around, especially after main net. Okay, awesome. Yeah. So any, I mean, since movement is gonna be like the super fast, super secure chain. So any particular use case that you try to kind of target or focus on top of the ecosystem? Yeah, so there's a few I'm excited for. So I'll start with Deepin. Um, Up Network is a very, very exciting team. They're building the movement phone. Um, they've already sold $5 million with the phones and sold out. Um, just finished their seed round as well. Um, but they're a very, very exciting Deepin team. So for the first time, there'll be movement phones being sold. Um, for DeFi, Meridian and Echelon are two of the core DeFi teams. Uh, Meridian is liquid staking and MEV. Echelon is lending protocol. Uh, there's a few of the purpose markets like Mirage. Um, and I think like on the consumer side, I think Bracket is very exciting. They've already disclosed around as well. Um, and they're like a, what, they're a swipe Tinder app basically for predictions. So you can bet on micro elections like cricket World Cups and soccer and football and other sports. Um, on the app itself. And then I think like uh, in terms of like gambling, we obviously have a few casinos that are doing a good amount of volume, but 
Um, yeah, you can check out all the apps at testnet.movementlabs.xyz/apps. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, I mean, and then like after the mainnet launch, what would be the like any any upcoming like huge roadmaps or milestones that you guys try to achieve? Uh, because I think like a lot of projects, I mean, a lot of projects in the crypto space, basically, the day of the token launch is kind of like uh the end of the projects. I would say. Yep. I think like movement is gonna be like different, very different. So like, yep. how do you try like differentiate yourself? Like, uh, even the token launch, like you guys still have like a huge, huge, huge like uh kind of like momentums to to yep. keep running. Yeah. Well, you the the best answer there is that when you launch a token, your job is to keep up the momentum. So the price just stands, right? Otherwise, if you just like quit, people will sell the token. Like no one will believe it anymore, right? Um, I think what's beneficial about us is that we have ecosystem TGs. So we put a lot of energy into ecosystem building and fundraising. So the ecosystem product is also TG. So for example, if you um, have Move and you hold Move, you'll get exposure to other ecosystem tokens that are launching. So uh, we envision that to be a huge case. Got it. Awesome. You mentioned about like uh, the fundraising, right? So like- yep. So far, like how much have you been raised and what kind of like investors have been supporting you guys? Yeah, so we raised over 45 million to date. Um, J17 and Tegan have been very, very supportive of us. Um, but the last round is led by Polychain. Um, we also have each of teams that have raised capital. There's been over I think, 30 million raised across 11 teams. Um, and then beyond that, we've done a bunch of TVL deals. So we have over 200 million now committed at launch uh, from some of the biggest institutional investors. So um, across the board, fundraising has been pretty successful and I'm um, excited for the future. Awesome. Incredible. Yeah. So like last question, like any, any tips or any like final words that you want to say to the audience, like uh, how do how should they like kind of evolve or participate in, in the movement or like how do they, what should they uh, perceive? How should they perceive uh, movement labs? Yeah. I think what's interesting about us compared to other move chains is that we prioritize the community. Um, for example, I built the first DEX on Aptos. I was a builder. Cooper built the first yield aggregator. Um, we know exactly what it feels like to be a builder, so that we work backwards. Um, so our team is spent mostly on um, builder incentives, working with builders, um, as well as like how to care for community. So I think we built up a pretty powerful community, um, and most of our day to day spent on that. So um, you can think of it as a community first move chain. Um, to bring the move language to the, vast, the masses. Got it, got it. Cool. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Rushi. I mean, like, uh, everyone yep. is very excited about uh, movement. And actually, yep. I'm also, like, kind of, like, a huge fan of the uh, movement incentivized testnet. And I think it is one of the testnet that I've ever tried. It's, like, super, super gamified, I would say. Yeah. Like, yep. it's very really fun. It, it seems like I'm actually playing a game. Like instead yep. of just doing some boring tasks. So I think yep. I'll put it like uh the testnet link like below and I hope everyone can like join it, participate in it, and be part of yep. the uh, ecosystem. Cool. Yep. Thanks. Thanks so much. Thanks so much for the time, yeah. Appreciate it.